Hello everyone. Dark Geyser here with the latest in our Space Engineers tutorial series. Today's tutorial we're going to be talking about mass and gyroscopes and the control of your ship. Now uh, a caveat with today's video uh, we're dealing strictly with large ships today uh, and I may do a similar video in the near future dealing with small ships but for today we're dealing with uh, large block ships and uh, large block ship design. Now for our demonstration we have here what can only laughingly be called a ship. It has all of the basic requirements of a ship. Uh, it has a cockpit, it has a gyroscope, it has a reactor for power, and it has at least one thruster facing in every direction. Uh, a clever design I would mean that I would not even need to use the uh, the, the armor blocks uh, because we could simply stick a bunch of uh, thrusters together and then attach all of the other components to them. But I was trying to get the mass as close as I could to 100,000 kilograms uh, just for the purposes of our demonstration. And as you can see in the lower right hand corner, our mass is uh, about 101,000 kilos. And as you can see, uh, the ship is very responsive. It, uh, it snaps around very, very well. Uh, it, it moves uh, very, very quickly. It responds very well to controls. Now, one of the things that we need to do while we're talking about this, we're going to go to our terminal and our info tab and we're going to turn on our show center of mass toggle. And then we're going to scroll in a little bit. Our center of mass is the little cursor that you see in the in the middle of my ship. As you can see, it will not appear if you're too far away. And the center of mass of a ship is very, very important. That is the point about which a ship will rotate when you're using your various controls. So as I'm tilting up and down, uh, it's the, the center of mass is acting as if it were an invisible axle passing through my ship and I'm rotating about that point. When I move my mouse left and right, uh, I'm doing the same thing. And as you can see, if we do a downward look, uh, we're pivoting about that point. When you do a barrel roll, your ship will roll about this point. This is the center of mass of your ship. And uh, this point is very, very important with regards to controlling your ship. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to and we have our mirror function on we're going to add some mass to the ship but because of our mirror function uh, the mass that we're adding is equal on both sides so as you can see the center of mass is still in the same spot that it was and even though we've added more than 50,000 kilograms. So we've increased the, the weight of the ship, the mass of the ship, by more than 50%. It still responds very, very well. That's primarily because not only have we added the mass evenly, but we added it relatively close to the center of the ship. Now we're going to take this additional mass off and we're going to turn off our mirror function and we're going to add a large amount of mass in one direction and as you can see we've moved our center of mass far to the right of where it was and we've added 60,000 kilos which is uh, more than half the the mass of the ship But by moving the center of mass, we've also moved the central point about which the ship will rotate. So now my ship, as I, as I move the mouse left to right, the ship is no longer pivoting directly underneath my cockpit. It's pivoting about the center of mass, which is four blocks to the right of where I was before. Now tilting up and down, because I did not put any blocks up or down, uh, tilting up or down works the same. But if I do a barrel roll, then again, I am pivoting about that center of mass. I am no longer pivoting about a point underneath my cockpit. And this works in any 
direction if we do the same thing moving upwards if we add a significant amount of mass going up as you can see we've we've again relocated our center of mass and this time we've we've moved it upwards so now our center of mass is nowhere near where it was and if I can relocate the camera now when I pivot from left to right I'm pivoting about that point when I tilt up and down I'm tilting and rotating about that point and when I attempt to do a barrel roll I'm rolling about that point so your center of mass is very very important with regards to controlling your ship now something else that's very important and we're going to talk about that next is something known as the moment of inertia now the moment of inertia is otherwise known as angular mass or rotational inertia and your moment of inertia on your ship determines the torque necessary in order to get your ship to turn as fast as you want or otherwise known as angular acceleration now torque is the amount of force necessary to achieve that angular acceleration now angular acceleration is basically how fast you accelerate going in a direction other than straightforward so in other words uh, I want the front of my ship to rotate very very quickly and now it does because again I've removed all of this additional mass and I still have my 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 starting mass and my initial gyroscope so my angular acceleration can be considered to be very very high a lot of that has to do with the fact that the torque generated by my gyroscope in relation to the mass of my ship is very high so it's kind of like putting a large engine in a relatively small car you step on the gas the car will accelerate faster than if you put that same large engine in a much much heavier car this is the same general principle except it's dealing more with your angular momentum and your angular velocity which is your velocity going from standing still to turning or rotating in a direction now one of the important things about moment of inertia and angular acceleration is not just the mass but the distance from the center of mass now what we're going to do we're going to turn our mirror function back on we're going to add that 6 12 18 24 30 okay so we have just added 30 blocks so we've added about 90,000 kilos so we're at 190,000 kilos and as you can see the ship still responds very well even though we've almost doubled the mass and again it can be said that the amount of torque generated by the the single gyroscope sitting here in front of me uh, is the the amount of torque generated by that one gyroscope is relatively high relative to the mass of the ship but now the shape of your ship is even more important than the mass of your ship and so we are going to remove the 30 blocks that we just had and we're going to put those same 30 blocks on in opposite directions so now the mass is the same as it was a moment ago and again the center of gravity is still the same because we've added an equal amount of mass to the front and the back and we haven't added anything up or down or left or right we're still at 190,000 kilos but look at what adding the mass has done to the responsiveness of the ship even though the ratio of mass to the number of gyroscopes is the same the ship is responding much much slower so 
it's not simply a matter of how massive your ship is and how many gyroscopes you have. What is also important is the angular mass or the moment of inertia which is determined by how long your ship is, how far the furthest point is from your center of mass. And we can demonstrate this. We'll take this to an extreme. We added 15 blocks to either end. We're going to add an additional 35 blocks. So now our ship is more than 100 blocks long. If I can get back to the cockpit. There we go. Now we're almost exactly 400,000 kilograms. So it's about four times what it was before. And as you can see, the response time is negligible. It would take you a long time to actually steer a ship this long. And I can hear you already thinking, well, it's four times as massive, so of course it's going to take longer to get the ship to steer. So let's add additional gyroscopes, and because of our mirror function, we added f uh, four gyroscopes instead of adding one. So, but let's, to, to prove the point, now you can see that the ship is definitely moving faster than it was a moment ago with one gyroscope, but it's still nothing like what it was when we had one gyroscope and 100,000 kilograms. Now the ratio of mass to gyroscopes here is actually better than it was when we first started. We had 100,000 kilograms, we had one gyroscope. Here we have five gyroscopes and we have less than 500,000 kilograms. The problem is the length of the ship. And this is the moment of inertia. The longer your ship is, the, the longer it is and the, the more distance between the end of the ship and the center of mass, the more torque you need in order to get the same amount of angular acceleration. It's because of the fact that the, the, the bow of the ship is so far from the center of mass, it requires many times the uh, amount of torque. So if you are planning on building uh, a relatively compact ship, then the mass of the ship is not going to be nearly as important. And again, we've got, there's 49, so we've just removed 98 blocks. That's 20, 40, 60, 80, 90. So there we go. Now we've just added back all of the mass that we took off. Actually, I think we added a couple of extra. No, I must have miscounted because we're not at 500,000 yet. This is what I get when I attempt to do math. Four hundred and fifty. That's four sixty two, four seventy four, four eighty six. That should be four ninety eight. Since the heavy armor blocks are three thousand kilograms a piece. There we go, four hundred ninety eight. So now, as you can see. The ship mass is the same as it was a moment ago when the ship was over 100 blocks long, and it was deucedly slow. 
now we have the mass is the same and it's much much more responsive because all of that mass is closer to our center of mass of our ship so if you want to build something that is very very massive but it's relatively compact and everything is close to the center you will not need as many gyroscopes to achieve a good control ratio as you will if you want to build a ship of less mass that's tremendously long or tremendously wide. So I hope that uh, this has been both fun and particularly uh, educational. As always, uh, comments uh, and questions. If you uh, have any questions, go ahead and feel free to drop them in the comments below. If there are any uh, requests for specific uh, data dealing with gyroscopes and controlling ships, then please go ahead and drop those uh, below as well. Uh, likes are appreciated, and subscriptions doubly so. This is Darkizer, signing off, and I hope that you have a good day.